What's up there, Tay Tay? <laughs> well, it's episode 13, oh and yeah. Taylor Swift's favorite number is 13. Her lucky it's her number. lucky number. Yeah, everything's 13. So I've got my Taylor Swift shirt on that I wore when I went and saw the movie because right. we're too poor to pay for the concert tickets. <laughs> And I got all, not all, but I got some of my, uh, some of my uh, friendship bracelets. I got my Kelsey era uh-huh. one. I got gotcha. my 13 mile ones. Right. I got Paradise Fall. Yeah. So anyway, I thought I'd, I thought I'd dress up a little bit. Right. Get a it little, looks good. Get a little snazzy. It looks good. It looks good. What does double O seven slash one one four say? <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> So I anyway, I just thought I'd do something fun for the thirteenth episode. Who knew we'd do thirteen? So yeah, I know. hopefully this is the lucky one, one that pushes us into the <laughs> stratosphere. Right. Maybe I'll just dump doing production tonight and just uh, you know. Anyway, uh, post show production. It was a busy day today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Work. Work. Ran home. Ran home. Show prep. Show prep. I ran to uh, the Lob Lolly and met Caroline. Oh, and that's right. Two people, yeah. and we met and did uh, wedding, wedding stuff, wedding stuff, and then wedding uh, season is upon us. And then I left there and ran and did a uh, Kelsey's Hope fundraiser. Right. Thank you, ladies, for coming out yeah. tonight. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Vicky, Teresa, and uh, I feel terrible. I forget the other lady's name, but we had a good time. Four okay. of us. I've never actually made a resin like at a party, so I made I made a little piece. I've oh. made them, but never at a party. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, usually uh, you're running the party. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, it's kind of nice. It was, it was yeah. nice. But okay. it was a crazy day for me. Right. You? Yeah. Oh, yes. Sam Walker joins us live. You know, doing the TV thing. Always today. appreciate talking to you. Always. About. Always good stuff yeah. with Sam Walker yeah. in the Outer Banks. Yes, did the TV thing today, folks. Uh, nothing like uh, getting an email at 2, two o'clock. Hey, you available at 520? And it's that folks down in Atlanta asking, can you do some TV for us? I'm like, yeah, okay. So it's two hours of panic or nervousness, followed by three and a half minutes of sheer terror, especially. Well, and on top of trying to decide what I was going to wear, because there's always got to be something. You could have worn my my. Oh, yeah, my that would have gone over top. real well. <laughs> that would have gone real well. So I, uh, you know, everything that I have that is Outer Banks unique is way too big. Yeah, I can't wear it or scraggly looking, even for doing something over Zoom. So I went with the Kelsey's Hope 5K shirt. So I thought, hey, you know what? Why not? We'll do some shout outs, a little little love to our uh, favorite charity. Yes, Kelsey's Hope. What we're running for in four. How many weeks? Three weeks. Three, three weeks. We gotta get this three weeks. Runs in. We gotta get. No, you do. I'm getting this nice. You know I'm what? getting these nice <laughs> three and three to five mile nights in. I gotta get some real runs in though. I know. So I yeah. So uh, not why? No. So this is uh, this was how. Where's there? Nope. I don't. That's not gonna work. I don't want that one because if I do that one, we're gonna have issues here on the show. So let me get rid of that before I even hit this. Okay, if I got the right screen up, I got the right screen up. Yeah, this is what we did today. So uh, here we oh, go. It's something we'll definitely have to watch along with wind-driven rain. And for more insight uh, and preps ahead for the heavy rain, windy conditions, and high surf <laughs> set to soak the Outer Banks, we want to welcome Sam Walker with samwalkerobxnews.com. First off, thank you so much, Sam, for joining Maybe us. on the big you know, screen. spring break, we think of the beaches of Like in the Florida. full 1080. How busy is the Outer Banks Oof. this time I'm of the year? I'm amazed that your head fit in there. the Outer Banks uh-huh. preparing for this <laughs> incoming coastal storm? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty steady. Uh, we're not, like, slammed. And, you know, while wasn't wall, expecting 150,000 people, 200,000 people turn it over on a weekly basis. You just, but you came up with the answer right, right off the top know, of your I know, but I could come up with a better answer. owners of the homes here. Who come down and take advantage of it for Easter week and line, such, though. but not too bad. And really, preparation, uh, we just call it Wednesday on the Outer Banks. It's just another there you go. day. You know, I'm gonna, they love that. Nasty they stuff, love uh, that. I, it's, it's the uh, funniest so thing to hear their reactions when I drop that line in about the, it's just, you know, it's, and I, I know I use it all the time, whether it's, you know, in conversation with, People around here. Or maybe we should get like. Uh, maybe we should get like a. I marketing. need a shirt. I was that's say, my it shirt. Could be marketing. That's my T-shirt. I've been <laughs> trying to come up with a T-shirt. What do we? What do you say? It's just Tuesday on the Outer Banks. Tuesday. We pick a day. We'll pick a day. Why don't we make it Friday? That's what's the Banks. back. No, the f- the f- okay, huh? Yeah, the 
It just it just Tuesday on the Outer Bank. Sam Walker Tuesday. News. Sam Walker OBX News dot com. OBX News. That's the back. I love it. Yeah, love we'll it. get the logo. We'll do whatever <laughs> the uh, the lo- the final logo that comes up with your. By the way, the video production is all screwed up right now because I didn't have much time to work on this part. This happens so fast, and that's how these usually work. Is well, I didn't. I, I got <laughs> in my car and I had a Stop. text before that T-shirt. Let's finish the T-shirt thought before we go into the pr- the well, pre-show. Well, we can't. We, we're gonna have to just. We're wait. gonna workshop this. We're gonna workshop this on the show. I think we should workshop this. We'll work. Th- I, I tell you what, that's gonna be the final segment before we do the this week. We will sh- workshop the T-shirt more. Okay, go ahead because you were at work. I got in the car. Yeah. I left an hour later than I had intended, right. and right. Uh, I had a text from Bill, and he's like, "Hey, what is Sam saying about the weather?" And I'm like, "I I don't know. It looks like it might rain. Like, what's yeah. going on?" And then I look at my next text. It's you. Hey, the Weather Channel wants me on. And I was like, what the heck is going on? What have I missed? <laughs> I mean, I went into work at 8, and it was, like, cloudy, but yeah. what's going on? And then you were like, oh, nothing, nothing. And I'm like, well, why is – and anyway. Anyway, long story short, yeah. I didn't know there was a weather thing that I needed to be aware of. And I guess there's not really, but – well, I mean, it's only supposed to rain. I mean, we're doing this on Wednesday night. We're supposed to get like four to five inches of rain on Thursday. You know, that's all. <laughs> not a big deal. I mean, no big deal. Hey, good. Hey, you're lucky. At least it's not 15. Well, how many years ago when they redid Elizabeth Street there in downtown Elizabeth City? Oh uh, yeah. When if it rained like half an inch and you you had to <laughs> you couldn't drive through it. Right. And right, these right. days you can at least get it. So. Yes, so it's been a very uh, chaotic week. I, Joy Christ and I at the Island Free Press are messaging back and forth. And, of course, I'm waiting for messages to pop up because she went to that meeting the Park Service was having tonight. But we were messaging earlier, and, and like, uh, she had sent him, sending me her latest story. I'm seeing her my latest because we, we share a lot of content. I mean, thank God I've got her, and we share so much content. So we're, we're conversing back and forth on Facebook Messenger, and she's like, this, this has been one of those weeks. I said, yeah, it feels like four years ago. When it was just the nonstop, because four years ago, right now, we were in nonstop. Every five minutes, we had a news story. Well, I mean, I think about two weeks ago would have been five years ago when everything shut down in Dare County mm-hmm. when they closed the bridges, and and it's been like that this week where it's just like boom, 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 and then you know things just went nuts Tuesday in Buxton with all the overwash and and, the, and all that stuff. So anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, enough about that. Let's get uh, the show officially started. Just a little bit of Taylor. Number 13. Welcome to the Sam and M podcast, episode 13. 13. So we, I found a safe remix so I don't get yanked off YouTube and Facebook tonight. This is, of course, the Sam and M Podcast at samwalkerobxnews.com. Find us on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, Facebook. I love talking on records. Like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell on the YouTube, share, five stars, all that good stuff. We are brought to you by statelinepowerwash.com. Parker and Smith Hammer serving the Outer Banks of Northeastern North Carolina with over 150 five-star reviews on Google. StatelinePowerWash.com for your free estimate. Miles Carpet Cleaning, family owned and operated, offering top of the line carpet and upholstery cleaning services in Curry Tuck and on the Outer Banks. With their $99 special, and they were down in waves today. They don't have island doing their job. Wow. Forget the rest. Call the best right now, 252 207 6707. And like them on Facebook. And my Harlow Photography, your on local natural light expert capturing the beauty of the Outer Banks. Online at sharlowphotography.com and on Facebook, search Stephanie Harlow Photos. All right, so let's jump in right now to the shout-outs. And we'll try to. We'll try to. We're too close. Stay on target. As best we can. All right, uh, what do you want to start with the shout-outs today? I want to start with Miss Stephanie Sanderlin. Yes. Uh, Stephanie has given us tons of shout outs on Facebook. She's um, told my friend Carrie Cahill at the school. She's like, please tell Sam and M. I absolutely love the podcast. She's got nothing but positive stuff to positive say. Vibe. And um, I just love her. She was a teacher at the elementary school at JP Nap, not JP Nap. At Shawboro. Well, I mean, I guess yeah, it was JP Nap, Nap too, Nap but then Shawboro. Um, I don't think any of our kids had her. I don't think any of them did. Um, 
or Mr. Sanderlin. Her husband was first grade teacher. I don't yeah. think any no, of them. No, they didn't one. Nope. They did. Um, her sister, Kelly Doxy, yes. was the boys, uh, was the teacher for both the boys. Yeah. Um, first grade. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, uh, we love you, Stephanie. We appreciate you always giving us positive feedback and love, and we feel it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. I've got uh, this one, which came across as a press release. COA president, Dr. Jack Bagwell, has become a good friend yes. of all of both of us. Uh, he was named the 2024 President of the Year by the North Carolina State Board of Community Colleges. Uh, the sp- award sponsored by the John M. Belk Endowment uh, recognizes Bagwell's exceptional leadership quality, steadfast, steadfast commitment to the community college mission and achievements in furthering higher education within North Carolina. Dr. Bagwell has been president of COA since December 2019, so basically since your ten, right after you were, he was hired not long before you became joined the I board came of trustees. In June, I think. You want twenty one or of twenty? Yeah, it was 20, early, not 20, too yeah. long. Yeah, so, but uh, it's great. There news. are, and it should be noted, there are fifty six community colleges in North Carolina. In North Carolina, right? And um, if you if you meet Dr. Bagwell for two seconds, yeah. you absolutely love him, respect him. Mm-hmm. He does a wonderful job. His staff, um. You see it at the meetings. You see the staff. They respect him. He, yep. um, he, uh, you know, everyone has different bosses through the years. And I've always felt the bosses that I've worked well or worked the most with are ones that include you mm-hmm. in the process, include you in what is there. And Dr. Bagwell truly believes yep. what I've witnessed in a team effort. And he um, gives them the tools and he guides them. But he's not like a dictator type right. uh He's just a really good guy, yeah. really good guy. So, yes. and I love his wife, Leanne. She's just great too. She's a Disney uh, nut too. Yeah, she loves yeah. The Disney so parks. We, we can get so. on the Disney thing. So, <laughs> I I have truly enjoyed. Um, I've enjoyed my time as a COA trustee. I hope that I will be able to continue mm-hmm. for well, at least one more term. Um, but I have really enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. And I do believe in the community college system. And um, Dr. Bagwell has really. Yep educated me so congrats to dr bagwell because i think he's wonderful indeed um one of my friends noted that she got her flowers her wedding flowers at sam's club and i talked to her again about yeah we talked about that last week so our daughter caroline daughter caroline Caroline getting married june 8th and going through all the the wedding stuff here and trying to figure it all out so i i plucked her ear again tonight so definitely gonna look into some sam's club uh, flowers and sherry reagan smith on the same topic was like go figure your daughter's like you be like (laughs) has a big plan but it's all last minute um and the last thing i just want to say that um we talked about kate middleton and she had a big press conference the other day and yeah um, the show so the show drops thursday at five on all the apps uh, and then was it like Friday at two, like Friday to, at two o'clock in the afternoon? It's already the shows are our shows already dated. Yeah, because she comes out and says, "Oh, I've got cancer." Which and is it was like, awful. "Okay, well, that's awful, but okay, it makes more sense now." The whole situation that's going on. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I, I, I do want to make sure that people know that I, I don't, I wouldn't have wished that or wasn't mocking her in any way, shape, or no, form, and I, um, not what we were doing we were mocking those who were trying to mock is what we were doing well and i do hope that uh her recovery can be done in peace and she can um get her treatment and recovery in peace and her family so anyway i just wanted to say that kate middleton has been found yes or has spoken yes she has i didn't mean that anyway we'll move on from that and then justin we wanted to give oh yeah so biggest uh, of big shout out yeah so uh justin bateman outer banks this week podcast had us on as uh his guest last week so it was a podcast about a podcast (laughs) Uh, in their last week's episode, which had a great time, and we talked, uh, we did that after we, before we did our episode, so we had a chance to talk about it last week, but that uh, that episode dropped the same day as last week's episode, uh, so thanks again to Justin, thanks to Gino, uh, and the folks at Lost Colony Tavern for having us over afterwards. This week on the Outer Banks This Week podcast, Uncle Ray is his guest. Now, who's Uncle Ray? Well, he's like a lot of folks that we've become friends with which is a vacationer who became a resident here on the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, uh, Justin gets his take on what attracted him here in the first place. Now I've used things now as a resident. You find the Outer Banks This Week podcast at OuterBanksThisWeek.com on the pack, podcast tab and on all your favorite podcast apps, just like you do us. 
Uh, and speaking of that, let's take a break because thanks to the Outer Banks This Week podcast, we had uh, someone reach out to us about our podcast. They found us. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about Beautiful. that after we uh, you hear this and what you're going to hear now is our good friends at StatelinePowerWash.com. Well, what do they do? Well, I mean, it's in the name, but it's more than that. Pressure washing, soft washing, painting, concrete floor sealing, so much more. StatelinePowerWash.com is locally owned and operated by Parker and Smith Hammer. They grew up right here in Curry Tut with local staff, so you know they're, you're keeping it local with Stateline Power Wash. Now, that algae you've been watching just grow and grow and grow all winter, well, so has your HOA. Get ahead of it now before things start getting really crazy and the letters start showing up in the mailbox, too. Stateline's unique soft washing technique will also clean up the pollening of your roof, siding, and driveway. And don't forget about those gutters. Stateline Power Wash will get out all that debris that's collected from all these storms before the next one fills them right back up and brings them down. You can buy or sell a home or land with Smith Hammer at Kingdom Real Estate Services. List your home with Smith and receive a free house wash, roof wash, deck cleanup, all from Stateline Power Wash. And check out the Moyak Real Estate Market Facebook group. It's the spot to be for local Moyak real estate. Ready to freshen up the outside or inside of your home? Then State Line Power Wash will get you covered with their painting and staving services that'll brighten the look of your primary home, home that's going on the market, or your vacation rental. Over 155 star reviews on Google. You know, whatever you have, State Line Power Wash do for you. It's going to be top notch. From Moyak to Manio, Edenton to Ducks, schedule now with State Line Power Wash. StatelinePowerWash.com and get a free gutter cleaning when you have your house and roof self-washed. Now do that before the end of March. I know the show's dropping on Thursday and Sunday's the 31st. Right. The madness is on the Well, that March Madness special they got, if you get in now, so give them a call, put them up at soft, uh, StatelinePowerWash.com or call 252-421-3775 and you can get that free estimate and get in on the March Madness special. There you go. You need to move the Sweet uh, 16. Salmon and podcast up. <laughs> <laughs> My skin is showing. <laughs> it's okay. Well, that's part of what we're going to talk about in this segment mm, this is that true. think about four years, oh, how many years ago? Well, even two years ago, mm-hmm. you would not be comfortable at all wearing something like that out in public at all. No. You wouldn't even think about buying something like that. No. No. So, and it's a little nerve wracking being on here right now because people are going to see it. But it, it, I was trying to be something fun and yeah. Well, part of that, but anyway, the transformation <laughs> that we've gone through with professionally and now physically and mentally and everything else uh, has a lot to do with our journey and weight loss. I am now entering year two of uh, this journey uh, with uh, taking Monjero. And it's, you know, going now one year ago last week, starting it, or two weeks ago, so, you know, 54 weeks on this, and trying to find a way to now navigate it with the issues that are going on with production. We're going to get into that. But what I want to get into now is the fact that our weight loss journey and our grief and all that stuff, we find more and more connections all the time. And it's not just out and about it or different functions or the different things that we've done and through social media. And now with the podcast, we've made more connections or through Kelsey's Hope. Mm-hmm. All the different ways that we've connected with people who have been through similar things when it comes to losing a child, losing an adult child, uh, going through this massive, uh, you know, losing a person or as was told to us at the whiteout party, two people, <laughs> essentially. Uh, so anyway... And it ties into what we're talking about in the last segment, which was the Outer Banks This Week podcast and Justin having us on. So in the mailbag, I wish I had uh, music for mail, but anyway, you know me, I like having music. I need music to talk over when I'm doing a lot of these things. Let me find something here and do that. Just just go on. (sighs) You're no fun. I know. All right. Hello, Sam and Emily. Just wanted to say I love your podcast. I heard about it listening to Justin on the Outer Banks This Week, listening on Spotify. My partner and I go to the Outer Banks at least twice a year. 
We're some of the crazy people who own timeshares. <laughs> okay. I, I keep thinking of that timeshare commercial now running. Uh, you call us vacationers, but we, we call the Outer Banks our second home. Again. Love it. We love it there and his family and all his uh, and all own weeks from spring through the fall. I was born and raised in Maryland, but my father was, oh my gosh, from what? Irwin. And I missed this part reading the letter and it just hit me. Her oh, father Irwin? is from Irwin. So when I heard you mention Irwin on one of the podcasts, I knew I had to keep listening. <laughs> Irwin, that's the uh, yes. first time I ever went to a Bird's grocery store. Isn't it Bird's? The yeah, well, it was lit? Bird's. Was it Bird's? It? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Lowe's Foods Irwin. bought them out. Um, yeah. That's wow. Crazy. That is crazy. Dad and uh, her dad and dad and most of his family are buried in the Irwin Memorial Park, which we always find by looking for the water tower. I know where the water. We know where that water yeah, tower is because when you come up the hill coming into Irwin, there's a big water tower. Yeah. And actually, uh, my that one house I lived in wasn't too far from the. That one's that the what no, I'm talking about the one when you come up the hill going into Irwin where the birds was. You could there's a water tower. Oh, okay, you know. my bad. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, there's one there. I know where she's talking about where the cemetery is in Irwin. They still have cousins who live in Fuqua, Verena, and Lillington. Oh, gosh. Um, then she goes on. I also have lost an adult child children. I lost both my girls. Kelly, my oldest, at age 23 oh. in 2015, and Casey at the age of 26 in 2022. Oh. Tell Emily never to apologize for crying or tearing up on air. Where there oh. are tears, there is love, and love is everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I know. Here we go. I'm so sorry. I also have been prescribed a weight loss medication with Govi, which I've been unable to get. The starter dose has been out of stock for nearly two months, but I'm encouraged by both your journeys. So she's going, she's trying to start. Right. And they're supposed to be, we're getting yeah. word, it's supposed to be released okay. within the next month. All right. So keep up the good work on the podcast. Cindy Norris from Frederick, Maryland. Hey, so Cindy. So Cindy, thank you so much. Uh, she's, a po- she's a listener on Spotify. Uh, and thanks so much for that great email. And man, it's always cool to find. We talk about it when we are, we, when we go around everywhere, it invariably, we run into somebody either from here, from the region, or we'll see somebody wearing some Outer Bank stuff. I, when we were at the Granville 4th of July celebration, somebody had a Howard's Pub shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was an awful Arthur shirt when I was in Tampa for the ACC tournament, the last time State and Carolina played in the championship game before this year. Uh, and there was somebody walking through Ibor City with an awful Arthur shirt on. I mean, you know, or we will be on the same boat as people from South Mills riding from Magic Kingdom to Fort Wilderness. I mean, it's always crazy the connections that get made. And here's another one. that She's from Maryland, but her family's from Irwin, North Carolina. Irwin, that's where the Episcopal Church I went to yeah, when it I was is. in college was in Irwin. That's right. Yeah. Little church so you have yeah. done, you have, they call it. And I would like to say that yeah. when you're um, an Episcopalian in the South, and especially Harnett County, it's not necessarily the easiest of churches to. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go there? <laughs> to find. All right. So um, we, let's talk about the weight loss thing because I am, I'm going to, I'm going to carry it around. We're going we're to bounce around a little bit. I'm having issues right now. I'm going not. I'm going to be honest. I am having issues because I hit my goal weight in January at 180. 185 was my personal goal weight. We hit 183 that first week of January. Now, I will add in a little bit of stress. Probably helped with that uh, the first week of January and mm-hmm. trying to do everything we were doing and launching all this stuff. Uh, and then. Had maintained in that 190 or 185 to 190 range. Pretty good for through, it ran on through it about uh, four weeks ago. And two things have happened. One, the, and, and well, and let me go back because we had switched to every other week. Now, one thing about taking Monjero or any of these medications is that they are designed to be a once a week shot. And because of several things, one, trying to stretch out inventory because there's not a lot of inventory or no inventory available right, in I've been any of them. To get us refills for like so, yeah. Four weeks. So we've had to stretch. So we've had to find ways to stretch it out, which is to go to every other week. And that worked. Which, which is, is an appropriate maintenance. Dose. I would just like to tell you that is an appropriate okay, so, maintenance. So we're dose. not going off. 
off script. But here. my prescription says every week. I know it says every week exactly. And we've talked. We've consulted our physician. Yeah. No, it is a, it is an appropriate maintenance. It's appropriate it maintenance. Is, yes. Says, yes. But uh, that's been difficult for me. Um, I'm back up to around 195, and that is coupled with the fact that I'm now fishing lacrosse games. So I'm running three to five miles a night. But I'm still sitting right here where I'm at right now for eight, ten hours a day. And more tempted to go in there and fill the time, whether it's boredom, whether it's, you know, anxiety and maybe anxiety about not work. I don't know. But I've been filling it with food. And it's been difficult not to where I had one thing I will say is that going on this, I was much more inclined to follow smaller portions and eat like you do or like you have to because your body physically can't. I'm not in that situation where I don't have half a stomach. Um, and so it's been difficult. And that there's been nights coming back from doing games where I've gotten my old order from Chick-fil-A rather than the new order. The new order being maybe a sandwich and a water. And going back to, oh, we'll get two sandwiches. We'll sneak one. I haven't, I haven't eaten all day. And I'm just, I'm having that problem. Right. And it especially is on the second week. Having, you know, so for example, I just took shot on Monday. This So the days leading up to that, I was I was struggling. I was struggling. So I'm not pleased with myself. Now, use this as an excuse on top of the, you know, okay, well, I'm, I'm using the excuse of going into officiating games. I, you know, I'm burning it off. Well, I'm not. But you're not because you're gaining. Because I'm still gaining. And this weather has sucked so much to do any other running when I don't have game days, which, which where I was trying to be and what I'd been doing, which is when I didn't have game days, is go run. Mm -hmm. uh, not being able to do it. So I'm just I'm frustrated because, you know, I'm not following I'm not following the protocols that have gotten me where I'm at. And I'm worried that it's, you know, so this conversation is coming out of my side of you've been in a conversation, though, about this. Well, well, oh, before, hold on. OK, so. Yeah. I, first of all, this is my life, my entire life. Yeah. Lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. OK, right. so that's been my entire, entire life. So you can't let, my problem is I let 10 pounds turn into 20 pounds, turn into 30 pounds before, you know, in mm -hmm. gaining. So first of all, the fact that you're recognizing it early on with it just being eight to 10 pounds and you feeling it is something to be, it is something to be congratulated on. You're way ahead of it right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second of all, that I think is very, very important to get out there. These medications are just a tool. They are not the end-all, be-all answer. So when we've been doing this, and through the year we've had this conversation, you're starting year two, we've had this conversation, um, that we need to also not only be making, and for me it is easier because I have a smaller stomach. Mm -hmm. I had the surgery, and then I also used the shot. So for me it is easier. I have two tools. But we have talked about making better choices having healthier options in the house and let's just be honest we haven't really been doing a lot of grocery shopping and being proactive in what's in the house lately we just mm -hmm. kind of are like eh, what do you want for dinner tonight and eh, what do you want for dinner right. tonight and then just going and grabbing right. or doing yeah. so i think on our part it's 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 a fact of that um i don't think it helps that we have an entire big container of sweet tarts by the bed, bed that when we sit in bed at night and watch TV or scroll TikTok that we eat handfuls of candy. The so, chicks uh, and bunnies and what's the other chick? It's chicks, bunnies, and something else. Um, sweet, sweet tarts. tarts. <laughs> they make them and they're Easter candy. At one point last summer, I was buying them for like twelve dollars a bag on Amazon. Yeah, I did look today at Walmart and we're completely out. But of anyway. Course they um, are. Anyway, so that's not helping. That's no. not helping. Like back getting, I've noticed that getting back into the like the snack and bed thing is not a yeah. good thing, and we need the to get out of that. The whole bowl of popcorn last night probably not a good idea, right? And because there's no activity, so yeah. I think it's it's again, I just want people to know that 
this, I, I would, if the drug company came to me and said, hey, would you do a commercial? Would you do, go around and speak? Would you? I would do any of that. Oh, do it heartbeat. I, I yeah. think, I, and they wouldn't. Sponsored uh, content all day. No, well, they wouldn't even have to do that. I really, truly believe in my core that this medication is like. Yeah, they would. <laughs> I'm just saying it's life altering for me. It has. And like I said, it's been my entire life, mm -hmm. but it's very, I want to be very, very clear. It is a tool and we have to be, you have to be in tune with, which goes right. to the Facebook argument I've been in. You have to be in tune mm -hmm. with the other things. It's not just, it's not just a food. It's like, why are you eating? What's the emotional component of whatever? So so I have been on a little bit of a Facebook, um, not rant. a battle, but a rant. Facebook war, Facebook so war. So somebody had posted, and I, and, I, and I I respect this lady, so it's nothing against her at all. Um, somebody had posted last week. Um, she had just said, obesity is now being recognized as a disease. What are your thoughts? And my, I just, without even thinking, said, well, Honestly, took long enough. Well, and it actually has been when I did a little research. Okay. It, like in 1998 and then 2007, 2008, okay. twice it yeah. has been diagnosed. So it's been for a while. Um, I think that this person sells herbal products or something. Okay. I, I think that there's that. But it got 122 comments off of her asking, what are your thoughts? And lots of people were like me i said well i can't believe it's been this long and then i did some research and realized well it's been for a while anyway but even 1998 seems late to me that's to be late. diagnosing as a disease that's 20 that's only 26 years ago i know um but well look at all the different things that has taken our society to how long to figure out oh this is a problem and never wanting to admit it you know, until people talk about going back to the good old days. Yeah, what was so good about them when you think about the things that were going on then? So, well, yeah. that, but then you also this just need to go back to elementary school. Let's look at the dictionary. Let's, let's look up the word disease. And a disease is a disorder or structure or function in a human, animal, or plant, especially one that has a known cause and... Lord, my eyesight. I'm sorry. A distinctive group of sy symptoms. Watch her, take the f watch her take her glasses off so she can see her phone. Look at her face. To. I've gotten better with these new glasses, <laughs> though. I will say. Um, distinctive group of symptoms, signs, or anatomical changes. Um, so, um, then that's disease. That's the definition of disease. So, you're basically looking at it's a structure or function in a human um, that has a known cause and distinctive group of symptom signs or signs. Um, and then you look up uh, just obesity in general through the Mayo Clinic is actually where I went to find a quick thing. And it's considered a complex disease involving having too much body fat. But it's not just a cosmetic concern. It's a medical problem that increases the risk of many other diseases. Right. Um, and... There are many reasons why some people are overweight, um, and that, and it has to do with. Hold on, I want to make sure I say this right. I'm sorry, I had it up here. It's genetic, behavioral, metabolic, and hormonal influences on body weight, um, and so I think it is important for people to understand when we talk about weight. And it, I, I just for the record too. I mean, we're just too. Two people having a conversation. We're two uh, we're kids not, who grew up with this. Okay, but, but no, we can talk about. It. I I want to be very. I think clear. we're experts. I, I'm not a medical doctor. I no. do have a doctorate in pharmacy, but, but I am not a medical but doctor. But we've lived this experience. No, I know, but I want people. Yeah. I I just want to be very clear. Right. This is just as me doing a couple Google searches and using what knowledge I have from my personal experience and my pharmacy experience. Right. So you know, I you know, and I don't want to cause a big battle with anybody. But for me, mm. it's very good for ratings. Yeah. Well, it and it it got me fired up. I mean, it went. I went back and forth, and there was a lady who, when I did a little bit of research, who was kind of really coming at me. She, um, I think, is a life coach, and like she was throwing alcoholism isn't a disease, and this isn't a disease, and I was like, what? No, when when you look at these She's things, not much they, of a life coach. Yeah, I, I was not, and I finally just said respectfully, um, and you know, I never do throw the doctor thing out there. I said, yeah. I said respectfully, my doctoral work um, tells me, and research tells me different. Or, you know, I threw yeah, yeah, something yeah, in yeah. there about yeah. that. I was really Drop hot. the but, academic bomb on him. But, um, so, 
it, it is there is the genetic makeup. There yeah. are people who your metabolism the genetically there are there are genetic reasons that people are obese. Right. There are hormonal influences. That's one of the things. The hormone that that goes to your brain and tells you you're hungry. We we are blocking that. So that helps with that hormonal th- on this drug that we take. Um uh, what were the other behavioral and metabolic? So I want to talk about the behavioral okay. because when I had my surgery, my gastric surgery, they were, I mean, I had to go to therapy and actually the therapist, it was only supposed to be one session. And she's like, I think you need a couple more. Uh-huh. So I think I had four. We ended up, right. we, we ended up, she's like, actually, I really just enjoy you coming in here and us talking. Yeah. So, but th- it, it was very eye opening. I was what, 43 when I had that surgery yeah. and Again, my entire life I had been fighting my my weight, right. and it was very eye opening to me. Although I should have probably known it long before that I am an emotional eater, which a lot of people are. But you name it, happy. I always thought of emotional eating yeah. as being sad. But if you're happy, you're sad. You're right. glad. Whatever you name an emotion, I can eat for it. Yeah. I can find a food and I can eat for it. Right. So it it's this medication helps helps with like urges it helps with me feeling full all the time it helps you know I feel full longer all those things but I still have to like at work today it was so stressful I there's a bag of Tootsie Pops in the corner and I was just like stressing the heck out and next thing you know I ate four Uh four and and they were laughing at me I said oh my gosh I've just eaten four of these out of stress eating I hadn't done that in a long time and so it's it's it still happened. I still did it, right. but I recognized it, and the, that's why I was proud of you for recognizing your weight. Because if you, the sooner you recognize it, you can right the ship and you can get it. Yeah. get it. I think you're also just from what I see here. You you've sat at home and at the computer for years. I mean, that's what you've done. I'm not making fun. Yeah, I'm just no, saying. It is right. So I don't necessarily buy that you're getting to that but i think you're antsy you're wanting to get out i get that but i think that there's a lot of other things going on we are planning the wedding there's a lot of money going out we're worried about you know we're worried about things that we don't necessarily say so i think that's not really necessarily you being home i think it is you being worried and instead of like vocalizing it or us figuring out what that is i think for you, it's just more. Uh, that's just from the outside looking in. Well, I mean, well, outside looking in is a way to put it because we share everything. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's one thing about it. So that's part of what the podcast was born out of was us having a chance to sit for an hour and pl- twenty or t- two hours or show prep and all that stuff and just talk about these things. So, yeah, it, it, the one thing I wanted to get into with that conversation you had, it's an overall general observation because my life is so ingrained on social media with what I do that the comments that you got thrown at you by someone that is a level of bullying that has always been done to fat kids because we were fat kids yeah straight up straight up right and that's for some reason Mm -hmm. what whatever is chip is damaged in the heads of people who want to play you know poke fun at the fat kid all the time and be the the comic foil or whatever that has you know social media has amplified that to infinity (laughs) i need to to bump the heat up for Um, you i will but yeah it has been amplified but now there is a way i'll I'll give you an example the bungee class that you do Mm -hmm. some do some toxic male Post on air about um, it was always, always middle-aged women trying to find ways to get out of doing cardio and um, something else. And it's like that bungee class you do, that's some like pretty, in, I mean, intense cardio. Oh, it's yeah. cardio weight. not doing cardio weightlifting. That's some pretty intense cardio that you're doing with that. And for people who have who have joint issues, it's actually oh, yeah, very yeah. good. Like it's it takes off a lot of that, like. I mean, there's always yeah. going to be those people. I will say, though, with social media the way it is, and again, my TikTok love, uh-huh. I will say I wish I had had that available to me growing up because I have found so many plus size people, so many bigger people who are like, yeah, it hurts sometimes when people say stuff. But look at this. And of course, growing up, side note, there's not cute clothes for big people no. back then like there are now. Yeah. But um, 
look at me wearing this. Look at look at me showing my belly and being proud of it. Mm-hmm. And look at me wearing a two. I mean, for years, I would say, look at them wearing a two piece. And I'm like, I wish I could be that brave. And you would say, what's it matter? They look amazing. You could look amazing. Like, I wish I had had those kinds of role models right. in my life. Granted, there's always going to be haters. Yeah. I feel very bad. This comes to my mind a lot. I feel very bad. James coming home, maybe fifth grade, maybe middle. It might have been middle school. Mm -hmm. And one kid really rode him hard about his weight, whom whom he's good friends with now. But this kid, and James one day was just mad, upset. And I I wish I could go back. And I know, parents, we have these moments in our lives that you are like, "Mm, I did not handle that right. Um, Very rarely for me, but no. (laughs) I'm totally kidding. I could re- really redo a lot. Uh-huh. Anyway, I said, the kid just kept on him about his weight. And I said, yeah. James, I can't go make that kid not say it. I can't go to his parents and say he's, you know, he's saying this about my son. It's hurting his feelings. Stop. Right. And I said to him, and I can't believe I said this because God help me. This is stuff I would hear when I was growing up. Well, if you want it to change, James, why don't we try to help you lose weight? Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I remember that. Yeah. I hate, uh, it's one of, probably one of my top five things. I Regrets. absolutely, yeah, yeah, I absolutely regret saying to my son. And I hate, to, I wouldn't, it had been, that's kind of how it had been to me. So I guess yeah. I just felt like, well, if you are overweight, how can I make it other than try? And my, my intent was, though, to help him get help, get, it yeah. wasn't meant. But God, I hate I said that. And that is what I just, no matter what anyone's size is, the battle is real, yeah. and in those posts, I saw people saying like they're just being lazy. People don't. They, yeah, you're not. You're not. No. I, you are not. You. There's so much going on. There's the behavioral. There is. There is chemicals in your body that are, you know hormones. There is so much going on. I don't want anyone to self loathe or take one bit of those negative comments to right. heart because one negative comment can really just yeah. screw you up. Okay. So anyway. Uh, we want to wrap with the uh, what's the latest as far as the inventory for these drugs. Okay, so real quick, we're getting word that Wagovi, the starter dose that has been on back order for a year pretty much um, in most places. It's been very difficult to get. I haven't had it in my pharmacy in over a year. Um well, in May, it'll be a year. Uh, well, Govi, we're getting word that within the next four to six weeks, we will have it. Some pharmacies, I think, are probably seeing it trickle in. So, unfortunately, well, Govi, if you weren't above the starter dose, a lot of people, like our new friend, are looking for yep. um, the starter dose. Right. Uh, the other doses are fairly good. However, here's the next issue in North Carolina, anyway. Come April 1st, your insurance isn't going to pay for it. If you're a state employee. Yeah. If you're a state employee. Yeah. So then there's that where so many were being, you know, so right. many people had gotten approved. So there's that. Um, then, so that's what Govi. Ozempic is, um, very, we have no issues getting Ozempic at all. I've, oh, okay. I've got a, I've got a refrigerator. Really? Like, well, uh, my partner was very smart and ordered a lot because when you start to see with any drug, when you start to see one go out, doctors switch people around. Yeah. So we've got, at least at our pharmacy, we are stocked on every strength of Ozempic, like lots of it. Okay. Um, Mongero is on back order and Zepbound is on back order. Like we have a few strengths, but like I've been trying for five weeks now to get your strength and my strength of Mongero and it's not available. It's not available. Uh, I don't know a release date. Somebody s- told me three weeks, but I could be wrong. Simple explanation why. I'm thinking, honestly, the Mongero and Zetbound, I'm thinking truly is, um, Zetbound is Mongero. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just slap a different label. So on. I think Zetbound came out, and I th- I just think it's a production. It's just I, a production w- thing. It, it, production meaning uh, that it's, it's simple, it's base ingredients, uh, having a hard time keeping up base ingredients in yeah, the and supply chain. Yeah, well, that, and I don't think these drugs. Because I haven't, go ahead. I don't think these drugs, like the Wagovi, they they actually um they kept telling us Labor Day it'll be out Labor Day it'll be out. Well, the drug rep came by and said, "Look, yeah, down in is it Winterville? Yeah, where they have the one plant. They have yeah, yeah, plant. Greenville, Winterville. Yeah, it's in yeah. Winterville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a plant and they were supposed to do up 
the Wagovi production like by three times or something of that one strength, and the first three batches failed. Like oh. they, they were having, so it's been like so it's so a production issue in the yeah, it's not for so much at least Wagovi. Okay. At least that's what the drug rep said. Uh, it's funny back that in September. I, I'm surprised we haven't seen more in, in coverage, or I haven't seen stuff come across my desk as far as. Things like that. Now, granted, a lot of times that's because the companies don't want any bad press that's right. going to affect their stock price. So, in in many cases, but I'm surprised we haven't seen more a little bit investigative, a little so, digging. So, so I do want to say this. I have, and in that post, people were like, "Yeah, well, then diabetics can't get it. Now we can't even get it because people who are fat are taking it." I want to be very clear: whether you're obese or whether you have diabetes, both of those are serious conditions with serious. Yeah with serious outcomes. This isn't that, a vanity project, by the way, yeah. that we're doing. This is not, that's, and most people are not doing it as a vanity project. This is to... To better their health. Make and us, to live longer to live and healthier. healthier. So I have gotten to the point at the pharmacy, because I hear it all the time. First of all, it's not because an obese person is not taking away your medicine as a diabetic, because I'm going to tell you yeah. why. One... An obese person, most of us are having to fight to get it covered by our insurances, right. and a lot of insurances aren't covering it. Yep. So you're talking twelve to $1,600 a month. Mm -hmm. Most people do not have that kind of money no. to spend for four shots. Right. Let's just be real. Yeah. That's four shots. So most people who are obese who can't get it covered on their insurance don't get it, yeah. or they go to the compounding pharmacies and get it that way. Right. So that's number one. So I tell people all the time when I hear that comment, I first say, you do realize both of those are medical conditions that need this medication. It's not one over the other. Neither one, one is not more important than the other. And I say, and number two, we should be angry with the manufacturer who knew the drug company, they knew you're not, you'll never convince me differently. They knew these drugs were going to take off yeah. and they were going to be amazing and they were going to make billions of dollars. Profits. There's going to be profits. There's going to be In the end, they will make billions of dollars off of this. And they did not, they did not get the manufacturing and get set, set up for it appropriately. Right. So if you're going to be mad at anybody, you be mad at the manufacturer. If you're going to be mad at somebody because the cost is high, you be mad at the manufacturer. You're not going to. I mean, I, I'm tired of getting cussed out over the cost of it. I'm right. tired of it. But right. anyway, that's a side. Another side note. But anyway, hopefully, hopefully by May we'll have good, good flow of everything. Yeah. Every and every day, every day, people need to be checking their insurance companies. Zetbound. Uh, God, did I just see Cigna. Cigna just changed it, so now they will do it with a prior authorization, where before it was an absolute no. Mm -hmm. I think it was Cigna changed it. Like, every day these insurance companies are changing are it. Yeah. yeah, so please, 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 if you have a prescription, just keep checking. Just keep checking with your insurance right. company. Right. And be vocal with it. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, let's uh, thank more of our sponsors, and that includes Miles Carpet Cleaning. Springs here. That dingy carpet and furniture is begging you to get them clean like the rest of the house. Miles Carpet Cleaning will get those carpets, rugs, upholstery, even vehicle interiors looking and smelling like new. Serving Curry Tuck and the Outer Banks. They go down to Hatteras Island. They were just in waves today. Miles Carpet Cleaning family has been cleaning things up on both sides of water for the last eight years. Their $99 special can't be beat. Get three rooms and a hallway clean to perfection, including an orange scent carpet, deodorizer, and scotch guard for just 99 bucks. From Miles Carpet Cleaning, call now 252-207-6707. Find more great offers by following Miles Carpet Cleaning on Facebook. Robert Miles and his family will take care of you like you're one of the family. Forget the rest. Call the best. Miles Carpet Cleaning at 252-207-6707. That's 252-207-6707. Seven and uh, we are also brought to you by CMIT. Now, when it comes to managing your business, it's important to have the right technology. That's why CMIT works to help businesses. Short for Completely Managed Information Technology, CMIT offers everything a business needs. Their services include tech support, computer and security, and server security, cloud backup, secure Wi-Fi. That came in handy yesterday business phones and more with cmit's help your technology will stay up and running for more information go to cmitobx.com i was hanging out at uh front porch cafe yesterday all day basically yep, uh, <laughs> i had i'll tell you about that in a second 
uh, and uh, was using their Wi-Fi supply, supplied by CMIT. Oh. Yes, all day. They kept me going with, with all the craziness going on in Buxton with the weather. So stayed right up. I was getting the truck worked on over at uh, KDH, Outer Ranks Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and uh, walked down the front porch, had an Earl Grey tea and a blueberry muffin, and mm-hmm. that's all I had yesterday. Well, there all you go. day until I finally got three o'clock. I had to have some food for that game. And then I got a bowl of soup and sandwich at uh, Ladle. So, that's you know, when you good. said that yesterday, I thought you said Lytles. And I was like, Lytle. 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 No. Ladles. All right. Uh, man, we've uh, flown right through all uh, this show so far. What are we going to talk about next? What do we got? Uh, do we? You want to run? Th- uh, Let's talk about our experience. I mean, I know you're going to do it as the Sam and M um, on, the on the road, but yeah. let's talk about that. So last week on uh, last Thursday, no uh, Wednesday, Wednesday. So we did the show on Tuesday. That's right. We did the record the show on Tuesday. Yeah. I can't no, remember. No, we did it Wednesday <laughs> before we went we down. We did it there. Wednesday before we went down. So Wednesday night last week. We uh, we got invited to come to Himalaya Indian Restaurant, which is uh, mile plus four and a half there, just south of Kitty Hawk Road, uh, next to the cleaners, next to Outer Banks Cleaners, uh, and uh, they invited us to come down and 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 I hit Emily up about this and I said, what are we gonna do because we've never done Indian food, we've never done subcontinent food or anything like that, mm-hmm. and so all right. Well, we knew that James and Megan, son James and his girlfriend Megan, um, they love it. They love Indian food. Mm-hmm. So they're like, all right, we call them up. So you guys are going to be our Sherpas <laughs> because it's Himalayan. Come on. Uh, so we went with them and they helped us out. But it was a great experience. I mean, we had a great time with we that. We had a great time. Well, one, we had a great time with the with two them, of them. Just the yeah. two of them. Of yeah. course, James was like, calling caroline mom and dad are putting us on a podcast we don't want to you know he was he's thinking we're going to slap the camera yeah. right down at the table and record them eating the entire meal well we did but not <laughs> and then caroline's like calls me mom james is worried i was yeah. like oh my gosh it's gonna be fine and megan i called megan i was like i promise we're not gonna embarrass y'all she's like you don't have to you don't have to convince me i I'll, i've told james that you're it's fine yeah so we met All him right, there thank you so we met him yeah thank you megan uh we met them there and um it was, it, you and I were very hesitant. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. About, yeah. Like you said, about the food. Um, I still, with my, the spices were just too spicy for me. Like Even, it's, it, yeah, even, even though we went, it was very mild for Indian food or and, Nepal food. Well, and you know. what the, the hostess told us, which I think is very interesting if you if you order it and you don't at this restaurant, I don't know if it's like this at every yeah. restaurant. If at their restaurant, if you order it and it is too not hot enough, uh-huh. they will take it back and they'll make it hotter, spicy right. hot. Yeah. And then if it's too spicy, they will take it back to the kitchen and they can make it less spicy. Yes. They want you to enjoy right. the spice level. Yeah. Um. And they have four layers. I mean, four levels of it. Right. They had. Uh, mild, a medium, a hot, and, and then an Indian, Indian hot, hot, and you have to specifically request Indian hot and have to like. I mean, I wouldn't say sign a release, but <laughs> essentially, it's what it felt like when she, the way she put it, it's like, like you want to sign a release on that one, uh, because the chef there, he gonna kick it up, he gonna kick it up hot, and so. he's from Nepal. He's, he's from Nepal. He's yeah. from Nepal, and as we, it's it is more of a takeout restaurant. Um, but we they have sat, sit down dining. Yes, you can sit down, but it's right. more takeout. And we were the only ones in there, and we were treated like royalty. <laughs> and was. they were bringing out stuff. Now the other thing about me, I'm a weird texture person, so yeah. I do not like soup. I don't like gravy. I know that sounds crazy. Um, those kinds of things, and it isn't a lot of gravy. These things. Um, but I loved the naan. <laughs> Yes, I the naan, I, I was the garlic gra- naan, I, yeah, it was fresh amazing. garlic naan, it was and, good. And um, the shrimp that we got that was like a chili shrimp, so yes. it didn't have a it didn't have a sauce with it. It was more of like a in veg, it was vegetables and all. That was yeah. really really good. That mm-hmm. shrimp was really good. Um, but you liked the the dishes that you all got. Um, yeah, the lemon. Uh, it was the it was not lemon chick. Um, yeah, Mm-mm. lemon. What was it? 
What did I get? Because she I, got you got the vegetable and the chicken, yeah. and then they got the is it called butter chicken? Butter chicken. Thank butter you. Chicken. You got the butter chicken. Yeah. But then you got a vegetable and chicken. It's the same dish, yes. but one was vegetable, one yeah. was chicken. Yeah. And then the rice, of course, was going. Yeah, the rice. <laughs> if you mess up rice, you're in trouble. <laughs> um, but then they brought you guys out uh, like a a tappy or a like a rice rice pudding, almost like a rice pudding. And but it was so good. Oh, that was so good. I mean, I, it was again, the it was a texture for me. I couldn't do it. Well, and you don't do milk. You don't do. I'm so weird. Y'all. She doesn't do like you know certain. I mean, many we talk about stinky cheese, Parmesan cheese. If you put Parmesan on something, you might as well just throw it in the trash. For She's me. not going to eat it. Uh, she's not going to touch it because she can't stand the smell. <laughs> but she loves mustard. I never figured that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really good. And then we had a great experience as we were leave or getting ready to leave. Um, the chef comes out and I mean, he, he like, it was like he opened up to us. Yes. If you will, well, we, he was making special things making that she brought things out through the brought, night. Yeah, that she brought out through the night. What I think, yeah. what I think was the turning point right. was when the rice pudding came and we were asking about the spice. Yes. He came from the kitchen with his special spice container of uh-huh. g- green, green chai. Green, yeah. It was green chai or something. Yeah. It was. And he was having us smell it, and he was telling explaining us, it to us, explaining it to us. Yeah. And then when we got up to leave, we got, to, got into the science of it almost. Yeah, he wanted us to look at. He's like, look at this picture and look at this picture. He wanted that he had like it's almost like the story of the people of Nepal were uh-huh. on. You know when you go to the Mexican restaurant. I mean yeah. the one like, but it was kind of that. And he's like, these people were they were they were traveling and here in their paintings. But he's like, they were traveling and here they are fixing their meal on the road, and uh-huh. it was children and women and and then there was a picture by the door and he was like my home in nepal i wake up and that's the view, view i see which is just, and yeah, it was a painting it was beautiful and they had the mount everest on there yeah. you know but i was telling sam after as we were driving home i i'm a social person this is no no joke no no secret but I absolutely am loving this part of our life right now, right. doing this on the road podcast and like really, truly even going to meeting Justin last week, like meeting other people yeah. and hearing their experiences right. and them like that. This man felt like I want to tell them more about my them my story. life and tell, yeah. like it really touched me. Like I really felt like, oh, my gosh, this is just it was just such a great feeling. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. I just know that. I'm grateful for the experience we're on right now, and I'm grateful to to be able to meet people and share our experiences. Right. But more important, I'm loving hearing their experiences. And this this man's family isn't here because he was. They live in Virginia, maybe. Yeah, Virginia. And I said, I said, which is better, Virginia or the Outer Banks? And he's like, Virginia. <laughs> and he was, I was honest. Like, I was like, really? He's like, well, my family's uh-huh. there. And I was like, oh, you know, and yeah. and the young lady like had family in Ohio in Canton where yeah. I have family. And um, I don't know. It's just it's neat to get to know these people and get just to get to just get a surface of them. Yeah. But I love it. And at the same time, you get a realization that, you know, how diverse our culture here is becoming because mm-hmm. of people like this who've come here from Nepal. I know. How cool. I mean, you know, and, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, how much our Eastern European expand the population we have from Eastern mm-hmm. Europe here on the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. Um, is there an Eastern so European restaurant? We need to I, you know, I don't think there is. That's a good point. We've got a, like, quite a few people. I mean, we've got, um, you know, Colombia and, and, you know, South America and Central America and, you know, and Europe, uh, all these different cultures and, and Asia and Southeast Asia and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Pac's a great example. is going to be catering Caroline's wedding. I mean, mm-hmm. all these different cultures that we have are that mesh here on the Outer Banks. It's such a cool experience because for so long we've been such an insular, closed society. Still is in a lot of ways. Um, but these getting the chance to meet these people, have these conversations and talk about, you know, whether it was hanging out with Gino and talking about his experiences going to Ireland and bringing that true Irish feel to or, the Lost Colony, or 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 go ahead, or yeah. how Gina was telling us how he had the the is it J six what is it called the 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 student what is their classification um, uh, J ones the J one that he for years he like had them live at his house yeah. you know what he had but the one was from when we were talking about let's travel Gino let's go here and he showed us the lantern like he had he had a student from. Not Vietnam, somewhere in Asia, and he's Southeast like, Asia. and he's like, let's go to this, and it's like this town that they have a, 
million lanterns that go up at night. Like it's a yeah. big festival, the right. lantern. Anyway, like hearing that, even though it's secondhand from Gino and he's like, hey, yeah. what do you think about this? But mm. again, he's had that experience meeting people. Right. And yep. And it's so cool. That's one of those things that's cool things about this. You know, we've been able to expand out our horizons uh through what we've done over the last two and a half months and and that's part of where on the road came out of and we want to share some of that stuff with right. you so yeah this week will be uh this weekend i'm hoping to have that uh cut up and edited and put together i got a few things i gotta battle with it i think uh just trying to get to, to tell the story the right way and this is all in the creative process with me so uh, I think this is going to be Saturday's project is all day Saturday. But I would just like to say that yeah. after we went there, I was like, can we stop at Crumble? <laughs> we did get Crumble. Cause so she I got me a good old chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, now they got the ovens fixed and they're reopened. So <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, look for that. It's a Himalaya Indian restaurant in Kitty Hawk. Check them out. I mean, you won't be disappointed, really. And, and just like I'm telling you, they were the nicest, nicest yes. people. Like, I, it's it's well worth going in there and just just saying hello. And if, if you can get the chef to tell you a little bit about his country and, and the host, I can't think of her name, but she was so kind and excited to share too. So yep, exactly, really cool, really yep. cool, y'all. All right, so, uh, we want to say uh, another thing that's cool. Hey, graduation's coming. Attention, all proud parents and graduating seniors. Well, it's that time of year again. Caps and gowns soon to grace the halls, marking the culmination of years of hard work and dedication, whether it's high school or college. What better way to capture those precious moments than with a professional photo session? Harlow Photography specializes in capturing the essence of these milestone achievements, whether it's individual senior portraits or family sessions to commemorate this special time. Stephanie Harlow's here to make your memories last a lifetime. Don't wait until the last minute. Schedule your photo session now to ensure availability, especially with extended family in town for graduation celebrations. Let's create lasting memories together. See Stephanie's portfolio and book your session today at sharlowphotography.com and like Stephanie Harlow Photos on Facebook. So, uh, yeah, contact Harlow Photography today to book your session and celebrate your graduates' accomplishments in style. All right, so uh, we'll wrap it up here. It's always funny how I keep thinking, man, what are we going to talk about? And you look at the clock, and it's like, good gosh, we've been talking. It's because you <clears> talk <throat> too long. Is it? Is it? I'm just kidding. It, are you sure about I that? I shut up and get the crap out of here. <laughs> All right, we'll do that then, Roy. Uh, let's see. What with some of the stuff we got coming up around? SamWalkerOBXNews.com. we got a lot of details about these things. Uh, American Legion and Coin Jock, uh, the, ca the Corporal George Dennis Matthews, American Legion Riders Post 288. They've got their annual pancake breakfast and egg hunt Saturday. Uh, Easter Bunny is going to be there Saturday, March 30th. No, you know, podcasts have long tails. I always say that. But uh, yeah, eight, uh, 8 to 11 uh, on Saturday, the 30th. Also on Saturday, Island Farm down in Mania, they push back their annual sheep shearing day. Because of the weather last week, and the weather's going to be great this weekend. Highs in the 60s and sunny skies. Of course I'm working. Yep, so they're going to have that from 9 to 3 admissions. 10 bucks, kids 3 and under, get in free. And uh, the resident sheep will be uh, hand shorn as they would have been done in the mid-19th century on Roanoke Island. Monday, little uh, Taylor Swift theme here. It is Curry Tuck Extension's Report to the People as a journey through the eras of extension. Ah. Cameras come, camera has come up with all kinds of... of uh, Cameron, cool. if you need a shirt, yeah. I got a shirt for you, girl. <laughs> you look much better than I do. Uh, celebrate the accomplishments of Curry Tech Extension in 2023. It's a free event at the Curry Tech Extension Center in Barca. They do ask you RSVP, though, uh, through Eventbrite. Uh, the Dare County Trails Committee, uh, they are going to be uh, having a uh, dedication of the Marshall and Gussie Collins Trail in Mania on Friday, April 5th at 3 o'clock at the Tillett Center in Mania. Uh, that's where uh, the Virginia Tillett Center, uh, that's where the uh, trail that was uh, formally established in November 2017 starts and then winds its way through the government complex and then on down to Skyco. we got to go down and run that trail. Oh, okay. That'll be a good one because there's, uh, there's a cool spur that goes off over to the Croatan Sound by the Outer Banks Visitors Bureau mm -hmm. offices, too, as well. It's, I, we, we, we need to run that. Uh, but that is on Friday the 5th. Uh, COA is participating, of course, in the North Carolina St Statewide Star Party through the North Carolina Science Festival, supported by North Carolina Space Grant with the Partial Solar Eclipse Viewing. That's on Monday, April the 8th, from 2 to 4.30. Optimal viewing is from 3 to 3.30. 
And it's going to be at all four campuses of COA. Manio, Barco, Elizabeth City, and Edenton. They'll have free solar eclipse safe glasses available while supplies last. Ensuring everyone's safety as they observe the partial solar eclipse where the moon will cover about 70 to 85% of the sun at its peak. So, um, You'll be tr- taking my mom to do that. Yeah, I think I will be. Um, <laughs> we'll go look at the calendar, though. Monday, Monday, April 8th. That's, there's a lot going on that week because everybody gets back from spring break. That's true. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll be able to. We'll definitely and hopefully the clouds stay away. Uh, the next session of Meet OBX, uh, Toyota Tower and Amanda Lotas, uh, that great group they've got going at Trio OBX uh, once a month. They meet again on April the 9th. Unfortunately, both of us are not be able to make it. Oh, uh, yeah, I you got to so work, fun. and I've got lacrosse games that night. No, I, I have cannot a board get meeting. You got board meeting. That's right, COE board meeting. Uh, the Curry Tuck FFA plant sale. That's April twelfth and thirteenth at Curry Tuck Middle School. The Admiral United Way is now uh, getting ready to take registration, or they're taking registration now for the sixth annual Bocce Beer and Bites event at Waterfront Park. That's on Saturday, April twenty seventh. Uh, they'll uh, register up to forty eight teams. Uh, Four-person teams, it's 200 bucks a team, and they will sell them until they're sold out or until April the 19th. So uh, that's always a cool event downtown Elizabeth City. Got anything to throw in there? No. You sure? I don't think I have anything. Uh, no, are you certain? Absolutely certain. Nothing else. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'll think about something in two okay. seconds. Yeah. All right. I turned the heat up a little bit. Did that help? All right, uh, let's uh, let's do this. Then we will uh, get on out of here. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us on tonight's edition, today's edition, this edition of the Sam and M podcast. Uh, and it is brought to you by StatelinePowerWash.com. Parker and Smith Hammer serving the Outer Banks in Northeastern North Carolina with over 155 star reviews on Google. StatelinePowerWash.com for a free estimate. Miles Carpet Cleaning, family owned and operated, offering top of the line carpet and upholstery cleaning services in Curry Tuck and on the Outer Banks. With their $99 special, forget the rest, call the best right now, 252 207 6707, and like them on Facebook. And Harlow Photography, your local natural light expert, capturing the beauty of the Outer Banks. Online at sharlowphotography.com and on Facebook, search Stephanie Harlow Photos. Like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell, share, share, and share like. Find us on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, Facebook, Five Star. Interact with us. Give us your thoughts, topics for future episodes, and more. Or just yell at us because we made you mad tonight. Sam Walker, OBX News at gmail.com. Or DM us on the socials. You sure you don't have anything else to say? Am I supposed to be That's a first. Something? No, I don't know. I just was. <laughs> I was like, is he like. Am I hinting at something? I can't think of anything I'm hinting I really don't know of anything I'm hinting at. I was just saying. Nope, I'm good. All right. Well, we'll see you next time on the Sam Podcast. Bye. Bye.